What's happening, guys? Welcome back to the channel. Uh, today, I have a very special guest. I brought Chris on the channel, and he was able to secure a digital marketing, fully remote job in a very short period of time. So thank you so much for uh, taking some time out of your evening and coming on the channel, Chris. Really appreciate it. Thanks for having me, Shane. Uh, my name is Chris, 22 years old. I'm based out of New Mexico currently, currently work in digital marketing. Um, as I told you before, my salary is $68,000 a year. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, we jumped right into it there. Perfect. Perfect. So uh, yeah, Chris was able to secure a really nice uh, digital marketing job very short period of time. I think you're about a year, year and a half in uh, right now. Um, and you were able to secure it, I believe, in about three or four months, you said? Yeah, about three or four months. Awesome. So take us through kind of like uh, the, the journey, like take us back to the beginning and maybe just talk about uh, your background a little bit and how you discovered digital marketing. Yeah, going back to the beginning, we'll be going back to late 2020. Um, I was a real estate agent at the time. Uh, I wasn't doing so well and I was looking at, you know, ways that I could do better. And I was looking at, you know, paid ads as a strategy to get leads and clients as a real estate agent. And at the time, you know, I started getting more and more into the ads. And as things went on, I got, you know, like really into it. And I decided, you know, I was like, I really like doing this. I'm getting pretty good at it. You know, I started looking up digital marketing on YouTube, things like that. I ended up finding Seth's course. I took it, you know, I leveraged the experience I got from creating my own blog, running my own ads on it, using my own money, $300 a month to just, you know, kind of turn knobs and Google ads and stuff like that. And then I eventually leveraged um, all that experience to get a job. Awesome. Okay. So you discovered Seth's course. What made you interested in digital marketing in the first place? So when I looked up digital marketing, it was kind of like one of those things where it was like, you know, everything that's new is like kind of like shiny and bright and everybody talked about it really positive, positively. But um, when you go on like things like LinkedIn, Indeed, and you just type in digital marketing, the amount of jobs that are posted, you know, like every day and the amount of jobs that are actually out there, if you look in the, just the entire United States, it's um, hundreds of thousands. And I was like, okay, um, this is pretty popular. It's not just, you know, people saying this, you know, like when you actually dig into it, there's so many job postings for this kind of stuff. So I, I really um, wanted to get into it. And, you know, I looked at the salaries. I was like, the salaries are good. You know, I can get remote positions. Like this is um, definitely something I should get into. Got it. And so what made you kind of choose digital marketing when there's all these different things on YouTube, right? We were kind of talking about this before the interview. You've got the drop shippers, you've got the day traders, you've got the Forex guys, you've got, you know, even people telling you you should pay, uh, play poker uh, for a living. Like you've got all these <laughs> kind of like scams on YouTube, basically. Uh, what made you choose uh, digital marketing? Yeah, I chose digital marketing uh, because if you look at it from a logical point of view, um, there's definitely a laid out path, right? Like if you take like a course like Seth's course, or you just decide to learn on your own through YouTube, um, let's just say you decide to do what I do, which is paid advertising. There's a laid out set of things that you need to do to get a job in paid advertising. If you want to do specifically Google, you know, obviously you would want to get your certifications, you know, learn, you know, like the entire like platform, like how things work in there, you know, like make your own blog, find clients in a city or something like that. And you know, learn how it works, learn how to like get good and stuff like that. And like, there's a laid out path, you know, like once you have that experience, you'll get a job, you know, like you'll get paid a certain amount of money, you get better, you get another job you get paid more money. You, maybe you make it to a senior position. Maybe you start your own agency. Um, it's very, you know, like laid out for you. Whereas like Forex trading, if you actually ask them how how exactly they make their money, they can't exactly tell you because they don't make that money from Forex. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. Yeah, there's like, uh, we were kind of talking about this, but, um, you know, all these channels that talk about like investing and, oh my gosh, all Forex and day trading and all this sort of thing. First of all, when you look at the statistics, it's terrible. And then the few people who do make it are, are mostly just outliers. But I mean, it, it, there is a small chance of baking it. But realistically, if you don't have much money to invest, which the average person uh, in the United States actually has a negative net worth until they're 30 years old because of all these kind of debt traps we have in the United States with healthcare, with education, et cetera, going to college, for instance. So the average person uh, bef you know, has a negative net worth uh, until 30 years old on average. So. Um, in fact, I think it's actually more than that. I think it's like 31 or 32, but, um, 
we were kind of talking about this. If you've got like 500 bucks or something and you're like the smartest investor of all time, let's say you're like Warren Buffett, and you get 20% returns. That's still only $100 in a year if you only have 500 bucks to invest. So if you're a young person and you're trying to make money, the smartest thing you can possibly do is to learn valuable in-demand skills and make money from active income. And then any extra income you have, go ahead, put it in like a Roth IRA, put it in like something passive, like an index fund, where you know approximately what returns you're gonna get on average, and those returns are gonna be better than 95% of hedge fund managers, right? 95% of hedge fund managers, the smartest people in the world, still cannot beat an index fund. So even if you are a genius investor, it's still probably better for you to just put your money in an index fund because you're not gonna be spending a bunch of time on it. It's extremely passive. You can automate the entire process. If you really were going to beat an index fund, you'd have to be spending like 40 to 60 hours a week doing research to beat it. And that's if you're like a genius level investor, which let's be honest, most people out there are not. So the smartest thing you can do is to just spend your time learning valuable in-demand skills and earn active income. And one of those valuable in-demand skills you can learn is digital marketing. And uh, that's exactly what you did. So you're, you're a smart guy, I can tell, and you kind of put that together just logically thinking about it. So that, that's really good that you're doing that. How long exactly did it take you to get through Seth's course? When I first took the course, um, you know, I got through about like the whole thing in about a month and I ended up going through again to just, you know, like double check that I did everything because one of the problems a lot of people have with Seth's course and some people may get like upset that they're not like having progress is that Seth has um, like gotten a really detailed way of laying things out and like what you should do and like what the process is. But, um, you know, a lot of people like to skip around where they're like, oh, like I'd rather learn about this without like learning like the first like few like foundational steps about digital marketing. And like some people won't do the assignments that he has in the course and stuff like that. And it, it may not seem like, you know, you're doing anything that that wrong. But, you know, when it comes to like applying and, you know, actually getting jobs and getting experience and stuff like that, when you miss those pivotal pivotal um, first steps in the foundation, it, it makes it really difficult. So it took me about like from one to four months. That was the timeline uh, to get through the course, get some experience and then get a job. Got it. And what was the job offer like for that first job in terms of salary? In terms of salary, I took on a junior position um, because that position was looking, you know, no experience or very little experience needed. And the first position was offering $42,000 as a junior. Got it. And then you were able to get a raise. How long did that raise take approximately? And how much was that? Uh, about eight to nine months. And then I got bumped up to $68,000 a year. Got it. Awesome. And I think you're probably on track for another raise very soon. Uh, I, I've got a feeling. Yeah. And it's it's kind of funny because like realistically, especially with the, the trajectory you're on, um, you're going to make it to six figures probably within about three to four years, somewhere around there. If you keep on this trajectory, they, they, if you want to, some people don't want to, you know, push hard. They just want like the, you know, an easy chill job. Um, and that's fine if that's what you want. But if you want to push yourself, you can definitely make it to that six figure mark within about three to four years. And then everybody else who went to college might have spent six figures in three to four years. So you're making six figures and you've already got a bunch of money saved up, whereas they are accumulating debt and they're all going to have to start off at an entry level position anyways at the end of the day. So again, you're you're a smart young guy, man. You're you're doing the you're doing the smart thing. So I uh, I commend you for that. What would you say to somebody who's kind of on the fence a little bit about doing digital marketing, about investing in Seth's course? I'm glad you asked me that question because um, digital marketing is great because the amount of money you can make in it is um, it almost has no ceiling. And let me explain because. In digital marketing, we're essentially taking businesses and advertising for them. We're optimizing their SEO for like websites and stuff like that. Um, historically, if you look back at the gold rush in the 1800s, uh, the people who made the most money were the people sell selling the shovels to the people mining for gold. Um, in the United States, we live in a, such an age where entrepreneurship is um, at, at an all-time high almost, and so many people are making businesses. And with digital marketing, you're the one selling that shovel 
you know, you're doing the advertising for them, you're doing the SEO, um, and, you know, you're trying to make their business uh, get better, and you're getting paid for that. And if you do that multiple times with 10 different clients and stuff like that, you can leverage a lot of money per month um, having your own agency or even working a job for another company because there is a lot of money in it. There are people that want to make businesses that get better and they go to these agencies to do all the advertising. Yeah, that's a great way to think about it. Absolutely. You're kind of just like the middleman at that point. You're facilitating the the buying and selling of products and services. That's a really great way of thinking about it. So, oh, I didn't think we mentioned what type of digital marketing job did you happen to get? So the type of job that I got is a PPC slash paid advertising. PPC just means pay-per-click. Um, that, that's basically where we just work with businesses and we create ads and uh, I run them on specifically Google where, you know, if you just type in the search bar, you know, like I'm looking for a plumber in my area, you may see a few sponsored ads. That's essentially what I do. Um, we're always optimizing against other businesses or other agencies. And that's basically what I do. Got it. And I know that's that's one thing that a lot of people are confused about because digital marketing is such a kind of like umbrella term. There's like so many different types of digital marketing careers. And a lot of them are really good. Um, SEO, pay-per-click. Um, you can get into like email marketing, like copywriting, for instance. That's another really good one. So actually, if you want to learn about the different types of digital marketing, as well as why it's such a in-demand skill where you can get into it with very little experience, and it actually hurts you in many cases if you end up getting a college degree, it's much better to just go straight into it. Uh, Seth does have a masterclass, which I will link down in the description, as well as the pinned comment below. Highly recommend checking that out because that'll explain probably like 99% of the questions you have will be will be answered in that masterclass. So definitely check that out. But with that being said, what is your work life balance like right now? Like in terms of like job satisfaction, work life balance, all these sorts of things that people talk about that are outside of the money and the benefits and all of that. How is that for you now? Uh, my work life balance is great. Um, you know, anytime I have to go to the doctor, you know, and this can be company dependent as well. But like anytime I have to go to the doctor, it's so easy because, you know, I just work from a laptop, you know, like my company knows I'm going to get the work done and stuff like that. And, you know, like working from home, like I've gone on trips to like Seattle or other states and, you know, I've gone back home to Maryland and, you know, spend time with family and I just work from there. And I think that's, you know, just one of those things you can't really put like a quantifiable on them quantifiable number on because it, it just it gives you so much freedom and flexibility yeah the freedom and the flexibility that's what people tell me over and over again when i kind of talk to them after after helping them get jobs like that's actually like one of the most underrated things that people don't even really think about um like for instance i'm kind of like traveling the world now I, last month i was in thailand at a business conference there's a ton of people living in chiang mai thailand who are either working remote jobs or they have businesses that, you know, a lot of the time the businesses don't even make that much money. But when you go to a place like that, the cost of living is so low. So it's basically like a cheat code. You can be making like fifty, sixty thousand dollars a year and be living like a king. It really only costs like maybe fifteen hundred dollars a month to live a really, really good lifestyle in a place like uh, uh, Chiang Mai, which, you know, back in the States, I think the last uh, apartment I had in the States was like eighteen hundred a month or something like that. So. Uh, it's like really, really quite expensive. And then food is really expensive as well. It keeps going up because of the supply chain stuff. Um, so yeah, it, it's basically like a cheat code, having that ability to just go anywhere. And, you know, some of the other things that are extremely underrated about flexibility working a fully remote job is let's say you need to go to a friend's wedding. You don't have to turn that down. Let's say you want to uh, start a business with a friend. You can literally just pack things up and move across the country anytime you want. Um, if there's some kind of opportunity that pops up, you can just literally just do your work remotely and go do this opportunity at the last moment. You don't have to turn these things down. So you're always ready when you know you get lucky. When life throws you a bone, you're ready to accept that and take advantage of that opportunity. Whereas if you're working in a, you know, like you said, like a factory or something like that, you're you're kind of stuck in one place and you really can't take advantage of the opportunities that life will give you from time to time. So that's kind of another uh, part of flexibility that's just highly underrated that a, a lot of people really like. And you are working uh, fully remote, right? Yes, I am working fully remote. Um, when I first got hired, they did have an office, but uh, due to world circumstances, uh, everything closed down. 
but when they reopened, um, they didn't require anybody to go back or anything like that. And when I got brought on, it was fully remote. So, um, and I think that's where things are going. Awesome. So any uh, tips, tricks, uh, advice, pro tips, anything like that for somebody else who uh, might be wanting to go into digital marketing? Pro tips is, um, you know, just trying to learn as much as you can. Um, when you interview with these companies, if you genuinely show that like you're, you know, weirdly obsessed with digital marketing or SEO or PPC or stuff like that, even if you don't have experience, if they find out, you know, so much about having experience, they're going to think, oh, well, what if we teach this guy on top of him, you know, wanting to learn this much and things like that. And, you know, things like courses, YouTube videos, there's tons of paid resources and free resources. And I say utilize both because one of them is free. One of them is not going to cost you anything. Uh, paid resources do help, but you know, the free stuff is always there. If you don't have the money, like you just essentially, you just have to want to learn. And if you put in the work, like I promise you that like you will eventually get to where you want to be. It's, it's not like, you know, Forex trading where, you know, like you're, you're praying and hoping you get money. Like I can assure you, if you have the skills, somebody will pay you to do it. Gotcha. Gotcha. And then for somebody out there who's kind of watching this and they're somewhat skeptical, because I know you said that you were kind of skeptical when you first looked at it, you kind of thought like this is this has to be too, you know, too good to be true. Uh, what would you say to that person in terms of investing in Seth's course and getting into digital marketing? Yeah, I would definitely say um, look on LinkedIn, Indeed, um, YouTube, like just look at how many job postings there are and, you know, how many companies are looking for this. And, you know, when you look at like a macro scale point of view, um, you know, every company does advertising to a certain degree and, you know, like they need people that can do that or they need people that can optimize their website. So it shows up in Google. Um, when you think about it logically, like there is definitely a need for it. And I can understand at first, you know, you're like, you know, I'm, I don't have a ton of money. Why would mm -hmm. I spend money on Seth's course and stuff like that? But if you look at the reviews and you objectively look at the curriculum and other things and really do your due diligence, um, you know, you can separate, you know, like the scam courses and the scummy courses from the good ones like Seth's. Got it. Awesome. Well, hey, Chris, thank you so much for coming on the channel, sharing your story. I think it's going to inspire uh, a lot of people out there. Um, really appreciate you coming on.